Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's On the Road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm your host, Corey Nockreiner, coming to you from the beautiful snow-covered Dusseldorf, and this is the episode for the week starting January 21st, 2013. So let me start with a quick update to the Java Zero Day story I've been talking about over the past few episodes. The update is to beware of fake Java updates. This week, Kaspersky Labs reported that they saw some fake Java updater software spreading online. Basically, you might receive an email mentioning this Java Zero Day vulnerability, which contains an attachment with a jar file saying that it's update 11 for Java. Now, this is actually malware posing as a fake update. You shouldn't install it. The key takeaway here is you definitely need to update Java, but make sure you use only Java's updater tool or you go directly to the Oracle Java update page to get your updates. Next, I want to talk about a big fine leveraged against Sony for the PlayStation Network breach. During the week, the Information Commissioner's Office in the UK fined Sony £250,000 because they didn't properly protect the user data on the PlayStation Network. This fine has to do with the UK's Data Protection Act, which says companies need to protect private customer data. And according to this UK office, Sony didn't do enough to protect their customers' data. This story just goes to show that governments and regulatory agencies will probably start putting heftier fines on organizations that don't erect enough defenses on their online assets. So if your organization handles credit cards or other private customer data, you should do your best to use appliances like our XTM or XCS appliance to help protect your network against these sort of network breaches. Next, I want to quickly highlight a story that actually happened the previous week. And this was Kaspersky, one of WatchGuard's partners, unveiling details about the Red October cyber espionage campaign. According to Kaspersky, this is a cyber attack campaign that has happened over the past five years, where attackers seem to have targeted diplomatic, government agencies, and scientific agencies with some very advanced targeted malware designed to steal sensitive data, Word documents, and also specially uh, uh, encrypted documents that is used by a number of diplomatic and government organizations. Now, because of the On the Road edition of this uh, video podcast, I don't have time to go into all the details about Red October, but Kaspersky has released a ton of data about this very interesting cyber espionage campaign, talking about how the command and control channel for the malware hides itself via multiple proxy servers, and how the uh, attack software uses multiple modules that the attacker can load on demand to do all kinds of things, including stealing data from mobile devices you plug into an infected laptop. So I highly recommend you check out SecureList blog, which is Kaspersky's blog, and all their information about this Red October campaign. I'll make sure to put links to all the information for the blog posts in the WatchGuard Security Center post associated with this video. I also quickly want to mention an important update for Cisco wireless LAN controller products. Uh, during the week, Cisco released an advisory detailing a number of vulnerabilities against many of their uh, wireless LAN controller products. So if you if you have any of the affected products, you should be sure to check out Cisco's advisory and install the appropriate updates. So let me finish up with what I think is the biggest story of the week, news of a, a college student being expelled for reporting vulnerabilities. During the week, there is news of a student from the Dawson College in Montreal who found some vulnerabilities in one of the uh, web frameworks or, or web application products his college used. And apparently, uh, he found a way to leverage uh, what I believe was a cross-site scripting vulnerability in this product to steal uh, potentially all the students at this college's private information. When he found this vulnerability, he reported it to his college to help them fix it. And at the beginning, it seemed like this was a very 
amical relationship and the college appreciated his help. However, shortly after first reporting these vulnerabilities, the student later used a, a well-known web application vulnerability scanner, I believe from Acunex, to continue scanning the site looking to see if they fixed the vulnerability or to find other vulnerabilities. And as a result, they decided to expel this student from the college and, and give him zero grades in all the classes he was participating in. So this has stirred up kind of a controversy in the security industry. The student was clearly ha had no malicious intent in mind. He is probably at worst a gray hat hacker, but really a white hack hacker that seemed to be helping out the college. And a lot of people feel like it was uh, a too much of a punishment to expel him for college just because he did some continued scans. On the flip side of the equation, you always need permission technically and legally before penetration testing. Uh, if you don't get permission from your uh, intended victim or target when you try to do something like an automated web application scan, you technically might be breaking some laws. In either case, my personal opinion is that I don't think this guy had malicious intent in mind, and I actually think Dawson College was a little too harsh with their punishment on him. But the good news is the creator of the web application, the people that actually made the application for this college, I believe they're called Skytech Communications, they've actually offered uh, this particular student a job. So in the end, he's actually gotten a little bit of fame for finding the vulnerability and he might get a new career out of it. That's all for this week's quick on the road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review. As usual, if you like the latest security news, be sure to always follow the WatchGuard Security Center blog, or you can follow me and WatchGuard on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept and WatchGuard is at WatchGuardTech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.